College Football on CBS Sports Network is presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. We're in San Antonio, Texas, also known as Military City USA, home of Joint Base San Antonio. It's Military Appreciation Day in the Alamo Dome, a perfect setting for the Army Black Knights to play UTSA of Conference USA. Welcome to San Antonio. Great to have you with us, Dave Ryan, alongside Corey Chavis, former star NFL defensive back Justin Walters joins us throughout the ball game on the field level as well. Chave, first game of the year together. It's great to see you, man. Our ninth year in the booth together, and I love the beard a whole lot. Oh, thanks, man. I had to change it up a little bit. Beard, you've got the goatee. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Big news for Army at quarterback. Christian Anderson is not here. He's hurt. Jamel Jones is not here. He's hurt. So two new quarterbacks will get their chance. Cade Ballard, a freshman out of Tennessee. Tyre Tyler. Combined shade, they've got one career snap at quarterback. That was Ballard against ULM. Yeah, and the coaches felt like, hey, let's go get it. <laughs> they were real confident that Tyler will be able to come in and provide his spark with his speed. And, and Ballard may surprise as a passer. Good news, Santa McCoy, team captain, and their top B back is back. And what a red zone threat he has been throughout his career. Last season, he was big in that part of the field. It'll be big for him to get going this afternoon with the quartet of B-backs. Speaking of great running backs, UTSA certainly has one in Cecilia McCormick. Uh, he can do it all. Right? Now, he's one of those players that has excellent balance. He, he runs low to the ground, and, and I think you see him here in the open field against Texas State. Maybe not the best blazing down the field speed, but enough. And, and then the vision to be able to cut back. You know, slow too fast through and then drop your pads. Uh, Sincere McCormick is an outstanding football player. Lowell Narcisse will start a quarterback for UTSA. Seven starts a year ago, but Frank Harris hurt, so it's Narcisse's job now. How will he handle the starting role? Justin has more. Dave, it's been a revolving door for UTSA at quarterback, and the hope is Lowell Narcisse can finally provide some consistency. The past two weeks, he's been a spark off the bench. Now that he's starting, head coach Jeff Trailer challenged him this week. Can you be consistent for the entire game? As for Army, when we spoke to head coach Jeff Munkin, he told us this game will not be too big for Cade Ballard. Ballard played in a spread-wide offense in Tennessee in high school and never lost a game as a starter. This coaching staff is confident and doesn't see why he should start losing now, Dave. Justin, a two-time state champ in Tennessee, a two-time Class 4A Player of the Year, Cade Ballard. Almo Dome safety protocols, 11,050 fans allowed. This building sits 65,000. Base coverings are required. Safety first here in San Antonio. Army won the toss but deferred. Landon Salyers will kick off. And away we go in San Antonio. Dingle watches that go over his head for a touchback. So Jave Lowell Narcisse gets his first start of the year, played very well in relief at UAB and last week in that loss at BYU. Very talented player, one of the top recruits in the country uh, when he came out of high school. And he was one of the elite 11 quarterbacks. Faster than you probably would think at his size, and that's something that we'll see really incorporated much of the afternoon. 6'3, 230, the LSU and JC transfer, his third stop. And future back will be Sincere McCormick. First start of the season for Narcisse, a handoff McCormick, big pickup. Sincere McCormick spun down into Army territory. Malcolm Morrison finally the track down tackle for Army, a gain of 26. Yeah, you see him inside, he's behind Leroy Watson, does an outstanding job of getting the hat on a hat. And I think that's the thing that makes him dangerous, his ability to block. Garces flushed. And Scappers out of bounds. Eric Smith. Jabari Moore helped track him down. And the other guy to take a look at inside is Ahofita Maka. And I think that's the one thing that they've been able to do thus far this season is really establish the inside run game behind him. He's massive and has pretty good movement. 
No gain on the run from Narcisse. So second and ten. Long snap count. The lefty. Time. Deep ball. Incomplete. Looking for Zakari Franklin, Broughton, and McDuffie on coverage. That was an outstanding job by Broughton and McDuffie, but defensively, they've got a number of players. Eric Smith, and then also this guy right here that you just saw, Broughton, uh, they do, do a really good job of patrolling the middle of the field. He had an outstanding interception a week ago, and he's been playing pretty good football for the entire season. Third and ten. Here's a check with me to the sideline for UTSA. Broughton has been a ball hawk for sure. Sophomore from Georgia. Pick against the Citadels you talked about last week at Mikey Stadium. Third down. Pressure off the edge from Onadeo West. Narcisse. So it makes him so good. Scampering, lunging. And let's look at the spot. Needed the 39. It's good. Noel Narcisse at 230 pounds, trucks forward. Holding on the offense, number 78. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Replay second down. Wipes out an 11-yard game. Billy Williams, our referee today. See, he's got a the chest of cock reel is so that's 78 right there, Otis, and that was actually Mamadeo West that he grabbed from the outside. And hand placement has been a little bit of a problem for Otis throughout the season. Now, it was also somewhat of an issue for the guy that would be in that spot, Spencer Burford, uh, who's played left and right tackle. Uh, so that's something they've got to work on and be aware of today. So that's a third and 20 here for Roadrunners. Pressure off the edge again. Narcisse flushed again. Gets away from Duran. And finally tracked down by Cedric Cunningham, the free safety for Army. Well shy of the yard needed to gain a 39 of the Black Knights. Gain a 10 for Narcisse. It was an excellent pressure package that time by Nate Woody, their defensive coordinator. And he brought Jabari Moore. And he's a guy who's active coming off the boundary side. He also brought Andre Carter the second. So early on, even in a long distance situation, Nate Woody dialing up pressure. Lucas Dean, outstanding punter, UTSA. Seventh best average in the nation for the Australian born kicker from that pro kick program. Tyrell Robinson watches that go out of bounds. Not Dean's best effort. And Army for the first time with their freshman quarterback, Cade Ballard, take over when we return. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? By Ram, built to serve. And by Verizon, the network more people rely on gives you more. Big star this program by far, Marcus Davenport, former first round pick of the New Orleans Saints, still on the Saints roster. And Jay, today's keys to the game brought to you by Ryan, but no relation. Well, normally you want an A, right, Dave? But today we're talking about giving out a B plus. If the B backs get going, they're averaging about 125 yards per game from that position. It'll be big for Army. The top-down approach on defense, we've already saw it with Bryden in the excellent coverage in the post. Win on fourth down, that special teams stopping Army on fourth down. You just talked about the great punter. And then clickbait, eye discipline, very important all afternoon for this Army. I mean, UTSA defense, particularly against this triple option attack. All right, here we go. First career start, Cade Ballard. Hand off Robinson. Slides off right tackle, pushes forward for a good pickup for Army on first down. Gain of seven. Greenville, Tennessee, we looked it up, Jade. It's a very, very small town, not far from Nashville. But he's a big hero in that state. As we mentioned, two-time State Player of the Year, two-time state champ. His dad was his head coach. His dad, Kane, Mom, Joey are here for this game. Found out about midweek he'd be the starter when Anderson and Johnson Jones were not available. 
One second down. It's McCoy. Plows through the line of scrimmage. Gets out to about the 21 first down Army. Yeah, and their offensive line is, is a very good unit. Man. I, I think that Mike Johnson, J.B. Hunter, we talked with Mike yesterday, and he talked about who was the fastest, him or either J.B. Hunter. Uh, but overall, this line has been pretty good for them all year. And Chris Cameron, number 85, is a very versatile weapon. They can do a lot with him. In fact, uh, they, they even split him out some. Good news for UTSA. Jalen Haynes has returned. One of the top defensive linemen in Conference USA and in the nation. Number one in blue. First down play. Jacoby Buchanan, the wrecking ball, be back in this triple option offense. Plows through for the plan, four or five yards. That's what Army wants. Well, this defense has been pretty good on third down, and they're going to have to be today. And uh, you see Kevin Nelson, uh, you talked about Jalen Hayes, but uh, I think their defensive linebacker in core has been maybe a little bit better than they anticipated coming into the season. Jamal Ligon has been outstanding. On second down. Keith. And the freshman, Cade Ballard, with a nice pickup. His first rushing attempt as a starting quarterback. Trucks out to the 34, moves the chains again for the Black Knights. Well, he does a pretty good job of reading off of Brandon Madison that time. And if not for a very good open field tackle by Kalechi Wachuku, I mean, he might have gotten even more yards. And, and I think that you can kind of see he's a competitive runner. <laughs> and, and that has to excite uh, the masses at Army if you're a fan. Uh, he's running with confidence early. Anthony Adkins featured be back on this set here for Army. Off the gain of nine. Adkins breaks a tackle. And here he goes. Anthony Adkins. Open field. Gonna house it for Army. Touchdown. Sixty six yards shape. And does a really good job of just patience and, and, and if you see number 96 Charles Wiley he got confused and we talked about the click but he believes that the ball <laughs> is maybe uh, still with the quarterback and, and running around right around where he's supposed to be is Atkins for the score. So yours for the PAT. And he's got it for Irving. 6-1-255 the sophomore Atkins Bounces off a couple tacklers and then the sprint. He ran away from some <laughs> road runners. Touchdown, Army. Seven up the game. Long touchdown run. Anthony Atkins, the longest play from scrimmage this year for Army. Uh, scoring summer didn't take long. Now, Chad, you think this next possession for UTSA is critical, right? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you almost have to look at this possession from a coaching perspective as if, if you're in the fourth quarter now. Uh, you, you come out and you get a three and out. Then one of those longer drives that we've seen from Army could come up the next series. They've got confidence now. And, and certainly when you've got your third or fourth B back, uh, busting off a 66-yard run that has to be demoralizing uh, for the UTSA Roadrunners. And so this drive, very important in terms of picking up at least a couple of first downs. Atkins a career best two rushing touchdown game against Abilene Christian. Ran for 70 yards that day. That B-back position so critical. McCoy, Barnard, Buchanan, Atkins will see today at B-back. Army off to a great start with a 4-1 record. Their second road game of the year. First was a close loss at Cincinnati. Sowers to kick off. And Dingle from the four. Got some speed. Decked outside the 20. Today's player profile brought to you by Corona Premier. And we spoke with him yesterday. John Radigan, what a talent. Yeah, and I, I think the one thing that has made him uh, really take the, the big step as a first year starter in your senior season is film study. He talked about picking up some of those habits from Eric Smith and also Cole Christensen. We asked him about uh, Cole and what he was able to do during his career. He learned a lot from those players. Second drive. 
Lowell Narcisse, the LSU transfer, 17 of 20, threw for 227. And a couple scores last week, Lawson Provo, McCormick on first down, short game. Back to Justin. Guys, you mentioned Radigan, and coming into this season, he actually only had six career tackles. He totaled that mark in the first game alone against MTSU. What really got him prepared for this upcoming season is practicing with his brother TJ, who played at Penn State. They worked on his agility and quickness. Such an impressive young man. Great to talk to him yesterday, Justin. Had that tackle a moment ago right on cue. McCormick is stopped by Smith. Our middle linebacker Eric Smith, junior from Bowie, Maryland. It's a gain of three, sets up third down. And this is a big third down. And I think the guy that you, you would think that they would, he would probably target in this situation is Joshua Cephas. Uh, he hadn't dropped the football all season. And, and for me, if I've got to get a first down early, I'm looking in his direction. Third down. Narcisse, patience in the pocket. Flushed right. The lefty throws off his back foot looking for Watson. And really the closest to it was Cedric Cunningham, the defensive back for Army. It's incomplete. And punt time again for the Roadrunners. Corey said this is a critical drive because you don't want to fall behind two scores to Army. And you don't want to get into a complete pass first mode if you're, if you're the staff of UTSA and Barry Lunny, their offensive coordinator. And, and here's why. You want to be able to have a, a good amount of balance uh, between your run game and that pass and attack to take some pressure off Narcisse in his first start this season. Lucas Dean, the first ever Australian born player on the Roadrunner roster. Brendan Dingle on punt coverage in late. Gunner spot. Dean's second effort of the day. Faces some heat. Gets knocked down. Flag is coming. Robinson on the return. Tyrell Robinson, the corner. There is a flag down. He's ripped down inside UTSA territory. Let's check out the marker from our referee, Billy Williams. It was fourth and six, so it depends on what kind of contact we had with the punter, Lucas Dean, there. What do you think, Corey? Well, if you got the five-yard variety of running into the kicker, then do you think about going for it early? I, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. because you know you're not going to have that many possessions potentially in this game. So that's a big decision as well. They haven't gone for it a lot, Dave, this season. It would be fourth and one from about the 32. There are multiple flags down as well in Army territory at the 40. So there are three flags in the field. Let's check out our... Various calls. There's a 44 yard punt from Dean if it stands. And Robinson scamper back 29 yards for Army. Yeah, that could be back in the area of maybe a block in the back as well. So you might have two penalties against Army. First year head coach, Jeff Trailer. A lot of success at the high school level. Gilmer High School won multiple state championships and was a two time runner up. There are two penalties on the play, both against the defense or the receiving team. Running into the kicker, number 58, that Philly's decline. Personal foul, blindside block on the return team, number 38. 15-yard penalty for the spot of the foul, first down. So Army does take over, but minus 15 yards because of the legal block for Jeff Munkin. And we'll take a break in San Antonio. Black Knights trying to go up two scores on UTSA of Conference USA. Safety first here in San Antonio. Mask up, birds up. That's the theme we heard around the stadium today here <laughs> at the Alamo Dome. Time now for Where Are They Now? Brought to you by Ram Trucks. Throwback to 1995. Barry Leonard Jr.'s Arkansas Razorbacks against Vanderbilt. Chave Money Jr. and the Razorbacks got the most out of the doors. Winning 35-7, Arkansas went on to win the SEC West, advanced to their first SEC championship game in school history on the field that day. Was none other than our great analyst, Corey. Well, Memories I, of that game? I, I don't remember a lot of losses. <laughs> Actually, I remember all of them. You had a great chat with Barry this week about some of those games. That was pretty cool. No, he was a good quarterback. He really was. And, and, and I tell you what, he was a competitor. We talked about that game when you beat Alabama uh, in Tuscaloosa on the last play of the game to throwing a touchdown to J.J. Metters. Uh, and, and he's a left-handed quarterback. 
and he's a left-handed offensive coordinator with two left-handed quarterbacks. First time ever, I believe, in college football history. Could be a free play here. UTSA had a player coming on late with Cade Ballard, the 5-9 diminutive quarterback heading to Adkins for a gain of about four on first down. No flag, but UTSA had players running on the field. Brandon Matterson, as the play was being snapped, as long as you don't have more than 11, you're good. McCoy's back in, featured B-back here. Behind the freshman quarterback, Cade Ballard, Kel Ballard, who did not play at the prep school last year. McCoy trucks ahead, then pushes the pile forward. He needs a 35 for the first down, so it'll be third and short. It's interesting that uh, UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer decided to take the, the block in the illegal block in the back of the 15 yard penalty because that negated that big return. And there's a picture of Kane Ballard who's looks like he's pretty rocked up. So you can see why his son's been running the ball pretty good, but you, you're still faced with that third and one here despite taking that penalty. Hand off. Let's see the spot, which looks good for a first down. Buchanan gets the carry for Army. The spot looks good. And the change move for the Black Knights. We saw Dad Kane of Cade Ballard, who coached him in high school. And he had a chance if you're Madison to make the play behind the line of scrimmage. He did a good job with the penetration, and he was able to actually work through that tackle. Shows the strength. Barnard feature back. Robinson on the pitch. Gets the edge. A big pickup for Army again. Ty Rell Robinson can scoot. Antonio Parks, the roadrunner safety, finally catches up with him. First down again for the cadets. Well, he's making a decision right here off of number 96, Charles Wiley. Uh, Wiley tries to slow play it, and then Robinson's speed is able to get around the corner against Wachuku. And those decisions, in, in terms of when you're running a triple option, when you pitch it, you're not going to see probably as much midline option maybe with Ballard, although he did have a pretty good run earlier. A little bit more triple and speed option you might get from him. There's first down. Cam Harrison back in the Army lineup, first time this year. Handoff, Robinson again. Harmonson able to make the play. Team's third leading tackler at 29. Hits this year entering play. UTSA, Corey seems to be on its heels against this triple option offense. It's no easy matter defending the one of the nation's best rushing attacks. Well, you know, in the first first and second down, they're about 90% run. And so you you can kind of uh, re rear back, and, and particularly if you're not a secondary player, and get ready to come downhill. And that's what these linebackers have to do. Ballard pitches Robinson. Spun down. Wachuku makes the play. Got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Kalechi Wachuku is starting at the safety spot for Rashad Wisdom. Suspended for the first half for targeting for a second straight week. Got well, look at last week. Look at the, the job by Clarence Hicks. Now he kind of forces it back to Wachuku. And Hicks is a very active player. And he's going to be important in this game. Now they're going to line him up. You see him right here a lot of times to the wide side of the field. That way if they run some of these faster principles that way. Now on this down, Army has a tendency to pass a little bit. You're talking about third and seven plus about 57% pass now. Throwing Ballard. Broken up. Mayfield with the PBU on Rekin Donaldson, the intended receiver. Corey Mayfield corner for UTSA. Good play. Yeah, this is an outstanding break by Mayfield. Sticks his back foot in the ground, and then he rakes through with the inside arm or outside arm. And Mayfield, he's done a lot of that raking. He forced a fumble against BYU when they had a good drive going early in that game. Mayfield, a very good football player. Zach Harding punting. Sheldon Jones receiving for UTSA. Watches that one go to bounds. And the spot is at about the 14 yard line. Roadrunners take over off the kick from Zach Harding. 31 yard punt for the Army punter. Okay, Ballard's first career passing attempt incomplete, so Army had a punt back to UTSA. 
Take a look at the AP top 10 powered by Ram trucks. Look at that score with Clemson. Whoa. OK, well, let's 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 get your predictions now. Mm -hmm. Who do you like in this top 10? You see Cincinnati uh, an American Athletic Conference team that's up in the top 10. Who do you like in this top 10 to surprise? Notre Dame I like a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Dave. I, I think they are really very interesting teams. But the Clemson has lived up to the billing so far, yeah, Jay. Yeah, they have. And, and, and you know what? The, the one team on there that has got to play a little bit better, I think, particularly today, obviously, against Georgia, but just defensively is Alabama. Let's see if they can kind of right the ship against a Georgia offense that's still, you don't know how explosive it's going to be. I've been disappointed by a lot of defenses for the top programs yeah. <laughs> in the first half of the year. Garcia takes over again on first down offensively. Yeah, Franklin has the catch. Bump that about by Jabari Moore. Zakari Franklin, one of the top targets for the Roadrunners. And let's look at his technique. Uh, we're going to see when his footwork, you, you see how he gets his feet aligned with the target outside. Very accurate throw outside the numbers when he gets his feet aligned. Second and one, whistles and flags. First false start will back up the Roadrunners five. False start. On the offense, number 12, five yard penalty, remain second down. That's the wide receiver, Joshua Cephas. Can't have that. Yeah, you can't. And they've had a lot of issues at times with penalties. In fact, really this year, uh, it's been about seven or eight, eight per game. So that's, that's a quite a few penalties. And you see a shot of Jeff Munkin. Armed Forces football, probably supported by Ram Curry. Second down off the penalty and six for UTSA. Narcisse, time, delivers Cephas. Julian McDuffie, one of the fastest Black Knights on the roster, makes play. Gain of seven, though, chain mover, and a first down for UTSA. Javar Bordeaux doubtful to play in this game with an injury. That corner for Army. First down. Here comes the heat. Here comes the escape. Radigan involved in the stop. Along with Malcolm Morrison, but a nice pickup of six yards for Lowell Narcisse. You can see when he's under pressure, it was a pretty good job that time up front by number 60, Brandon Roth, for being able to block his man. But when he gets a lane, he has no problem about taking off. You know, he ran in the 4-7 range at almost 230 pounds coming out of high school. Uh, so you know he can pick him up and put him down as he proved against UAB. Here's second down. Lots of time, R.C. Sets the feet. Cephas has the catch. McDuffie to tackle. Pick up out to the 42. First down again, gain of 11. And, Chave, I'm with you. When Narcisse has time to set the feet and get yeah. comfortable, he's got a great arm. And, and you can see this is from the middle of the field, does a pretty good job with his eyes, and then he goes outside, and he puts a number of RPMs on that football. And, and that doesn't really give McDuffie an opportunity to break on it cleanly. On first down, lots of pressure. Screen was set up incomplete, though, at about the 38, looking for Jones. Now, Narcisse has quite a story. High school out of Louisiana, one of the top-rated high school recruits nationally. Everybody in the Power Five wanted him. Went to LSU, but two ACL tears. Yeah. One his junior year, other knee his senior year, really changed his course, didn't it? It did. You know, you also had an ACL back in high school. So, I mean, you're talking about the history of those knee injuries, and he looks pretty impressive physically in terms of his recovery to this day. Oh, with you, it looks great. Second down. That big arm, sideline route. Franklin with catch, more of the stop. Look at that wow. throw. Wow. And you and I have walked off the hash here before yeah, yeah. in prior trips to the Alamo, though. That's a big time toss. Yeah, well, you like walking them off every stadium we're in, but again, that, that's probably about a 40 yard throw for our fans at home. Uh, an outstanding throw on a line. Game of nine. Whistles stop play. False start again for UTSA. Yeah, Tough yeah. one. Has to stop. False start. On the offense, number 61. Five yard penalty, May's third down. You know, that disappoints Jeff Trailer a lot. Now, the coach said to us this week look, if we had one consistent quarterback, you see that false start a moment ago, left side of a 
the line. We might be a 5-0 and team, but you get the feeling watching Narcisse that he could be the guy. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the, but, but, but remember, they felt that way early with Frank that's Harris. That's true, he played so well, you're right. <laughs> against Texas State, you, you're thinking you got your guy, right? 3-0 start. Third down off the panel, late Narcisse. Cephas, the catch of the 45, another first down for UTSA. Surgical passing here on this drive for Narcisse. Yeah, and I think that's what it has to be. Uh, you don't want to have a lot of low percentage passes against uh, Army because they're going to keep everything in front of them. They're going to make you go down the field with this type of passing game if you're going to throw it. Play fake to Daniels. Over the head of Jones incomplete. There was pressure coming in from Nolan Cockrell. Back to Justin, more on Narcisse. Dave, because of that injury history, as you alluded to, this coaching staff has always called Narcisse an old soul. They look at him and they say that because of his history, that there's just something different about him in his eyes, and they feel that he's equipped to lead this team. The big question, Justin, our theme all week, with Coach Trailer, how we handle being a starter again? On second down. Incomplete McDuffie the coverage on Cephas. And it sets up third and long. It's and not easy, Jay, right? Becoming the starter after seeing Frank Harris play so well at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I think that may, that's a great point by, by both you and Justin. And, and really now when you think about uh, him in, in this role, uh, you're not going to continue to get the same looks from Nate Woody. So you're going to have to show maturity right here on third and ten because he's going to throw another pressure package at you. Tenth play to drive here. Sincere McCormick back in as the feature back on a passing down next to Narcisse. Pressure off the edge again. Here comes Army. Narcisse, the sideline right. Franklin grabs it in front of Moore. Jeff Bunkin says that was bobble out of bounds. It's called a good catch. And, and a first down. It's a really good job by Sincere McCormick picking up John Radigan in the under blitz pickup. That is an outstanding blitz pickup by Sincere McCormick. And then the throw was right on target. And was it a bobble? They, they, they may take another a look little at bit. that. Moving a little bit. Game of 11. It's a long snap count here. The replay booth is not going to buzz, it appears. First down. Narcisse spins away from the blitz. McDuffie was coming on that blitz. Going downfield and incomplete. You know, it was Morrison on the blitz there for Army. That's a good call, Dave. I mean, and Morrison did a good job of timing that blitz up. That's where you saw the Elite 11 and the four star ability. He actually spins to his blind shoulder. Let's take a look at this. It's going to come free because I'm a, really you have Eric Smith occupying two. So now you got a free rusher. You got to get away from that. Look at the speed. And he resquares his shoulders and throws the ball about 50 yards down the field. That was pretty impressive. An incomplete impressive play. Second down. Zakari Franco the catch. Cedric Cunningham free safety for Army makes the play. Franklin has emerged as one of the top targets for UTSA. And along with Joshua Cephas, it's a little banged up, running back to his outside receiver position. Well, he got a third down again. Let's take a look and make sure we know where Morrison is at number two and, and see if he brings it again on this play. And they've got a number of guys kind of like disguising right up in there. You see Amadeo West. He's also moving around. They move around. They don't really want your offensive lineman to know who's coming in what gap. And now they got three guys standing up. That's the end of the first quarter. First quarter complete. And a big third down for the Roadrunners when we come back. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. Army UTSA head to head. Great game so far in San Antonio. Seven nothing game here, start of the second quarter in San Antonio. 
Army's back in action next Saturday, noon Eastern, from the friendly confines of Mikey Stadium. They host Mercer of the FCS, only Army, 24 home of CBS Sports. Army 20 and 2 at home going back to 2017. Narcisse, effective first quarter change. He's done a good job of being able to escape pressure. You see him get his shoulders aligned on that throw along with his feet. This is a good slant route. That time, I believe, to Joshua Cephas. And for him, seven completions, the longest one being 11 yards, but he's had to make some 30 and 40 yard diagonal throws just to get those 11 yards. You're going to have to attack outside the numbers against this Army defense. Here we got third and eight. Will they bring pressure again? Would, who's going to be the fourth rusher? Big play to start the second quarter. McCormick featured back. Their kicker, Hunter DuPlessis, hasn't missed all year. He's made 20 straight field goals dating back to last year. We'll see if it's four down territory. Pressure off the edge. Narcisse to Watson incomplete at the 30. Leroy Watson's got to bring that in. He might still be running if he's got it. Now decision time for Jeff Trailer. Well, I think when, when you have a, a kicker, and, and let's say let's take one more look at this, and it's off the edge, Andre Carter, the guy who almost blocked the, the kick a week ago, and, and then you just got to reset your feet and kind of settle down. Your feet got a little happy when you felt that pressure. That's why the ball sailed on him and made it a difficult catch for Watson. But Duplessis does a really good job, I think, of just staying right on his target line, and that's the reason why he's been this successful. From 50. Trying for his 21st straight field goal. He's got it. How about Hunter DuPlessis? National leading 21 in a row dating back to last year. From 5-0 chain, it is good. Duplessis now eat 12 for 12 on field goals made. And a long of 50 to make it a 7-3 game. I think this is important too. What type of uh, distance do you get on your kickoffs? And, 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 and when you're talking about a field position game, you know you've got a dangerous returner back there in Tyrell Robinson. So we'll see how much he gets on this kick. Robinson has the wheels. We know that from his five. Run back for Army. Turns through some tackles and leans ahead to the 24 yard line. That's good kick coverage. Chuku got in there. Armed Forces football proudly supported by Serve Pro. New quarterback in the game. Tyre Tyler, as we talked about top of the broadcast, is about to take his first career snap at quarterback. 5'8", 185, sophomore from Newport News, Virginia. New look QB this week for Army. Got spun around. Got dropped. Hands and company. Monkey. DeMarco Guidry. No gain on Tyler's first career snap at quarterback. And it's interesting, they went to a scheme they used last year against this UTSA defense, the quarterback counter. So they start off like they're going to run to one side, and then they pull around, and the quarterback's running back the other way, away from what the linebackers are seeing. On second down. The option look. Get her there again. Slams him backwards. And nothing doing for Army on the first two snaps of Tyre Tyler's quarterback run. He's going to come out. And Ballard is going to return here for third down. Uh, Coach Jeff Munkin talked about the fact that you'd be surprised maybe at Ballard's ability to throw the football. And right here, third down and nine, this is where they had their most tendency. But take a look at number 88, Camden Harrison. He's up here at the top, over 400 yards receiving a year ago. Third and long. Ballard flushed. The freshman throws on the move. AJ Howard, intended receiver. It's incomplete coverage from Antonio Parks. And fourth and long, you'd think Jeff Munkin is going to punt here for Army. 
Yeah, no question. Not in this situation, you would. But you got to be happy right now if your defensive coordinator, Tyrone Nix. I mean, he's faced the triple option before. He's faced beer option. He's faced a little bit of everything in his 20 years, going all the way back to his time as the youngest defensive coordinator in college football. This defense off to a good start. Harding does not face pressure. Jones, watch that take a hop. And a good army roll. To about the 26. And UTSA gets the ball back here in San Antonio. It's Military Appreciation Day, and Army has a 7-3 lead. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. By ServPro's Proactive Cleaning Program. Certified ServPro Clean. A higher standard of clean for your business. And by Tubbs. Goes to work in seconds for fast heartburn relief. We well, cover a lot of Army football on CBS Sports Network. And Brett Davis, the offensive coordinator, usually is in that spot. The empty chair now calling the game offensively from the press box. He has moved down to field level. And there's the coach now, Shave, with the two young quarterbacks. You think that's the reason? Yeah, I think it has a, something to, to do with it. I, I, I believe when you, you're as disciplined as they are, and, and you're going to see him, you know, I've had enough maybe, and he's going to go ahead and I got to get down here to the field, and <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I don't think it's a bad idea. Uh, sometimes you might want to reemphasize some points with a little bit more fervor, uh, you know, in person down down on the field. Interesting. That's a big change for Army. We'll see some of the offense back in the field for UTSA. We'll see if Sincere McCormick can get going here on the ground for the Roadrunners. In motion this time on cue. There's the touch and the pass. That was incomplete. And be careful that's backward or forward for a potential live football. Call a forward incomplete pass. Exactly. And you can't miss those gimmies. In, in that situation, you've got three blockers out in front. That's the reason why you have your big tight end out flexed to get a block, a hat on the hat for McCormick. So you just waste it down. And you can't waste downs against this defense. Seventh best defense nationally against the run. Only 83 yards a game. And Army only gives up 12.6 points a game. That's number seven. David Stout. McCormick, he's been good. Sprints through that hole. Right side of the offensive line. He gets to the 40-yard line, gaining 14, first down. Uh, it was a really good block by Maka, the center. He actually kind of really kind of did, did a different path to get to number 53, Eric Smith. And that's what opened it up inside. So Maka, a guy we talked about early, showing his versatility and mobility. First running play after 11 straight passes for UTSA. Running again, McCormick. And Eric Smith is there to drag him backwards as he gets to about the 44. Made a four on first down. McCormick, the reigning. For last year's Conference USA freshman of the year. Nation's leader with 569 rushing yards entering play here today in San Antonio. Went for 48 so far today. He's gone for 100 or more five times in his career. Garcis throws. Cephas was tied up with McDuffie. There was some contact, there was some hand fighting. On the go around on the sideline, but no flag incomplete. Well, the timing is still off, and, and you can see Narcisse. He like he knows he missed one there. I mean, a little bit of a double move that time by Cephas, and he gets on top, and he just lost his balance. And credit McDuffie for just staying patient. Yeah, wide receiver gets a step on you. Do not panic. When you panic as a defensive back, bad things happen. Cephas had a spectacular catch against Texas State in overtime. I mean, wow, one hander. Third down, Narcisse looks his way again. McDuffie to break up, incomplete. Break on the ball, the finish by Julian McDuffie. 
And punt time again for the Roadrunners. Well, he's not going to back down from a challenge. You saw him against Cincinnati late in the first half with a breakup just like this. Closing from the inside out this time. And he lets him know about it. And McDuffie, I mean, he's a player that uh, I think he's done some pretty good things in terms of making his own diving interceptions. You looked at the Middle Tennessee game, flipped underneath itself to make a diving interception. Lucas Dean. Australian-born punter, 45.2 yards of punt last week at elevation against BYU. Robinson on a hop from the five. Tyrell Robinson drags tacklers pretty strong for a speedster. Good return. Army's got it back. Tight game. Army and UTSA. Time for Army's Greatest Legends brought to you by The Exchange. Take a look back at Army quarterback Ronnie Makeda. Mesquite, Texas native dubbed the best option quarterback Army has ever had by then head coach Bob Sutton. Led the Black Knights to a 3-0 record against Navy. Of course, Commander Chiefs Trophy, all important for the players on post at West Point. Started on the 96 team, finished 10-2, ranked in the AP poll that year. This is a great start for Army, their best since 96. That 4 to 1 lone blemish on the road at Nippert Stadium in a hard fought game against a really good Cincinnati team. Yeah, I mean, that Cincinnati team is ranked eighth in the country, as we saw earlier when we put up the graphic. And uh, I think now you're playing another talented team who also went against a top 15 team a week ago, and they're doing their thing so far today. Tyler's so, back in the game here, champ. Second stint for Tyler. Tyler. Keeps. Good pickup. What Chiku makes the play defensively for UTSA. Well, we've seen Ballard, and you've seen him. Well, this is a magical fake that time against Antonio Parks. And then this time, a good decision against Wiley, who was kind of slow playing the outside pitch. This time, he hands it off, and Wiley gets lost in traffic uh, with the offensive lineman. And Atkins makes it happen. Second out play after the gain of seven. And Jacoby Cannon churns through traffic and does have the first down as he gets to about the 37 yard line for Army. It's a gain of four for the bull like Jacoby Buchanan. Got a few descriptive adjectives. <laughs> Wrecking ball. Steamroller. Got, got to be more for me. I mean, man, this guy's tough to tackle. He is. No question. Tyler, a little issue with the center to the exchange, but sprints by some road runners. Just tripped up. Otherwise, he is going to the end zone for Army. Gets to the 49 of UTSA. Gain of 14. First down, Black Knights. Uh, we, we've talked about the decision making, and, and this time you see an outstanding block by. You just called him. What did you call him? Jacoby Buchanan? Steamroller. <laughs> he just steamrolled with, with the block on the outside. He cuts off of that block. I mean, these B-backs. They, they do quite a bit when it comes to blocking. Here goes their unbalanced line, and this is a big part of what they do to that side. You've got J.B. Hunter now at the tight end to that side, their right tackle. Atkins featured back gets the carry. Anthony Atkins. Harmonson trying to rip him down along with Charles Wiley. Big pickup. Should be another Army first down. Let's go to Brent Stover now in our New York studio with a Papa John's update. Guys in the SEC, Terry Wilson finds Allen Daly Jr. for the touchdown. Kentucky all over number 18, Tennessee in Knoxville, 27 7, early fourth. Whoa. Thanks, Brent. That's a surprising score. Well, Kentucky, they, they kind of shut down Mississippi State a couple of weeks ago, though. So, Brent, I'm feeling you. Kentucky, they've been playing a little bit better than people think. UTSA, Chad takes a timeout. And first year head coach, Jeff Trailer. Brent Davis, as we said, now on the field to talk to his young quarterbacks, Cade Ballard and Tyler Tyler. Now, Tyler didn't even play last year, had some academic issues there and some injuries a year ago. He was taking snaps in practice and camp at slot back, well, one of the outside backs in the triple option, not a quarterback. This week, they got him ready because Jamel Jones and Christian Anderson didn't make the trip. Maurice Ballon, who's seen some snaps, is here and available, but not in the game plan. Well, one thing to remember, though, about Tyler, in 2018, when they had the big year, he was the scout team player of the year for the defense in Great terms point. of the preparation. So he, he's, he's gotten the respect of his teammates. Off the timeout. 
Tyre Tyler bounces his way ahead to about the 35. Another good pickup for the diminutive Dynamo. Give him four yards listed at 5'8", 185. I'm not sure about that 5'8 part. <laughs> And Noah Knapp, the center, the backup center to Connor Bishop, about six foot, 285 pounds. He's getting some repetitions. Played against the Citadel last week. He's playing well on this drive. Second and six. Adkins. Wiley trying to drag him down, but Anthony Adkins just turns ahead. He's really close to what they needed at the 29. Give him five, just shy of the marker. So third and one, but you can almost book it. It's going to oh, be yeah. four down territory here. Well, you got two downs to get this first down in, in terms of their thinking. And you just bring, you take 255-pound back out, you bring a 260-pound back in. When we talked to Brent Davis, he said the recruiting has gotten better, and, and it's a focus. These bigger backs at the B-back position. Third and short. Buchanan. Lunging ahead, Monkey to the stop, not before he got himself to about the 26, another first down, gain of four for Jacoby Buchanan. Couple touchdowns against ULM at Mikey Stadium earlier this year. You can see that we talked about the center nap, but, but also an excellent job by number 59, Mike Johnson. And he's an outstanding blocker, a team captain, and his leverage at the point of attack is consistent down to down. Okay, Barter. Feature be back here. Tyler, the midline option look. Gets away from Parks, but not from Wachuku. Remember, no Rashad Wisdom, first half, his second straight targeting call. Wisdom will play in the second half here today, gain of four. Uh, as he's reading and he sees that there's nobody on the edge, so he keeps it. And he's got a lead blocker outside, and that lead blocker is Artis Hobbs. And so another good decision, and, you know, you pick up two or three yards, and now you're in a, a favorable second and six or second and seven. The play up the middle, the fullback dive. With about the 16 for the first down. And Anthony Atkins has a touchdown run of 66 yards, the lone TD of our game so far today. This plays in the hands of Army, low scoring defensive battles. Jeff Lunkin's team is not just prolific on the ground, second best rushing team nationally. Their defense has been like a brick wall this year. So, a two score lead is a lot against Army. On third down, McCoy stumbles ahead. That spot looks pretty good. Looks like a first down. He's got it. Chain mover again for Army. And it's not for, you're actually outnumbered to this side because you've got a number away when they, to the other side where they have more offensive linemen. It was actually a pretty good job that time by Lorenzo Dantzler. But if you can make a stop for one or two yards, it's really insignificant when you're in two down territory. Today's Red Zone being brought to you by Verizon. Numbers for the cadets. Hobbs in motion. You can it again. Turns forward, plows forward, and gets to the 10 yard line. And his third rushing touchdown of the year came against Abilene Christian. Army perfect at home at Mikey Stadium for Jeff Munkin. Mercer next week here on CBS Sports Network. And they're trying to rotate some defensive linemen in. Christian Clayton, Tremaine Bell the second. And that's one of the things Tyrone Nix is trying to do is, is give these guys a breather in these, on these long drives. On second down. Tyler keeps. Decked at about the five-yard line. Kalechi Wachuku has been active defensively for UTSA. Watch number 95, Christian Clayton. It kind of a brush by block by Noah Knapp. He gets on up to the second level, and he falls down. So you're playing behind that block. Your man short to the side away there from where they're running it. So it, it, when you're at this nose tackle position, and, and, and their defense is a three-man front. Uh, so it's a very important to be able to get this player handled right here. And Noah Knapp has done a very good job on this drive. 
Our first and goal. New cannon lunging. End zone touchdown, Army. A six plus minute drive. And Jacoby Buchanan motors to the line of scrimmage and scores for Army. Well, let's take a look at it. Number 95 right here. We just talked about it. You see him, he basically gets really cut by Knapp, and then that really is where he's running off of, running right behind him. And that's one of the things that you see them do these drills prior to the game. I talked about it with you and they're excellent in that in that two to three yard area after they've taken their angles of being able to take the legs away from defenders. Salyus has a PAT for Army and the cadets have a 14 three lead. Well, we talked about an A. <laughs> Normally you will give an A if a position is playing well. Well, for the B backs, it's a B plus for the Knights. Those B backs are in an A plus. <laughs> no question. Buchanan Atkins each a touchdown run for Army 14 3 lead. Uh, UTSA coming up on the halftime report powered by Ram Trucks. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Aaron Taylor, Kevin Carter standing by to get you caught up in all the action on a busy college football Saturday. It's all coming up on the halftime report powered by Ram Trucks. Good to see some young fans here. Birds up in San Antonio. Year 10 of the program. One bowl game so far. New Mexico Bowl. A few years back, Larry Coker started. Frank Wilson, now the head coach at McNeese State, took it over for a while. New era here with Jeff Trailer. First ever Roadrunner coach to start his career 3 0. But UAB, Legion Field, great team. Conference USA lost that one. Hard fought game in Pro Bowl last week at BYU, and now they got their hands full with Army. Down two scores. Salyers the kick. Dingle hesitated a bit. Waits. And then it's going to be slammed down just outside the 10. Yeah, Dave, I, I don't understand that. Because, I mean, I, I returned kickoffs and it looked like he may have even tried to fair catch it. I was thinking about it, but you've got to hit it. We'd like to welcome the newest member of our CBS Sports family, Aaron Jordy Fishman. Look at that beautiful. AJ, son of our longtime friend and CBS director Corey, his wife Ellie, who was Fishman born Thursday, weighing seven pounds, two ounces. Congratulations to Corey, Ellie, big brother Jax, and of course their dog Sienna on this wonderful new addition to their family. Congrats, guys. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome, man. Jordy, we might have some hands. <laughs> Another Jordy Nelson from Fish. That's right. I see you. That's <laughs> awesome. Here's our cease on first down. Sideline route. Franklin the catch. Jabari Moore bumps him out of bounds. Good pickup for UTSA. That's another accurate throw. Now, this offensive line, they're only okay in pass protection to me. Uh, but they're going to have to be efficient in that area the rest of the game. Pick up a 10, first down. Sincere McCormick. Trying to drag tacklers ahead. And yeah, does pick up a couple. 197 yards in that wild double overtime thriller in the opener on the road at Texas State. And that was a single game UTSA record. McCormick can do it. Got a good chat with Sincere. Big Derrick Henry fan. Here's second down. Narcisse got to run with it. John Radigan got there with some heavy contact as usual for the star army linebacker. Well, he attempts to climb the pocket here. That's pretty good uh, protection, I think, by Josh Otis on the outside. He climbs up and, and West is in pursuit. But here we go, third and three. It's been a mix of run and pass for them on this down and distance. Trying to feel like UTSA really needs this one. Narcisse, some pressure, flushed. Lowell Narcisse, lunging ahead. 
Morrison trying to upend him. That spot looks pretty good, though, for a first down for the Roadrunners. That's an outstanding effort by Narcisse. I mean, you you know at this point that you've got to be able to really have a personality play. Your, your team is kind of needing some energy. And, and so right here, you're going to say, guess what? Ah, no, I'm going to lower it on you, Malcolm Morrison. And that was a statement run by Narcisse. First down, pressure, trouble. Ryan Duran got there. Ryan meet Lowell. <laughs> wow. Physical sack for the Black Knights. Uh, you're going to see him working right here on a little bit of a twist. And he comes around. Maka, a guy we talked about earlier, uh, they're passing the twist off to one side, but Maka doesn't pick him back up around. That's one thing they love to do is run these line games. They did not pick it up that time, UTSA. Second down. McCormick. Contact there from Cedric Cunningham, the free safety for Army. They'll, uh, make up some of the real estate lost on the big sack by Ryan Duran. It's a good run inside. You see Watson leading the way again. He gets up and makes a decent block on Cunningham, but now you're in third down and 10. And they haven't attacked the middle of the field much today. A little bit of a surprise they have not worked that area of the field. Runners three to seven. Third down so far. Franklin has a catch. Dakari Franklin. McDuffie got it by one leg. Eventually makes the play for Army. Much needed conversion. And a first down for UTSA. And look at the route here on the outside. He's going to just basically hook it up down here at the bottom. And look how long this throw has to be. So actually he runs a little bit of a speed out. And then he basically makes more miss in the open field. On first down, Cephas had a hand on it. McDuffie had a hand on him. That's yeah, incomplete to Joshua Cephas. I think that's his first drop of the season, Dave. I know you graded the film. It's a good one. I'm telling you, that catch against Texas State, double <laughs> overtime, one-hander, yeah. while being interfered with, there was a flag on that play. I mean, that was exceptional in that and he was an actually, incredible win for him. He was actually going against a pretty good competitive corner for Texas State Morris on that play. Which made it even more impressive. We got 39 and a half here. Here's second down. Narcisse, dangerous pass, big play defensively. Dingle has the catch at about the 41. And Lowry with a thumping hit for Army. You can see. Remember that shot you talked about earlier about from Duran? Remember that shot, Dave? Oh, yeah, that hurt. I'm telling you, that hurt. And that made, you saw Narcisse holding his ribs. <laughs> Man, that's something to kind of keep an eye on moving forward. Here, third and eight. And, and, and again, who's going to be the fourth rusher? That's what you got to figure out if you're this offensive line. Two timeouts, UTSA. Duran, some more pressure. Narcisse keeps the play going, extends the play. Noel, Noel Narcisse. Tremendous effort for UTSA and gets a roadrunner first down on what could have been a disaster. Jeff Trailer sprints upfield to get the official attention timeout. Well, we've seen, the, we talked about Durant earlier. He makes a miss this time. Then he makes Carter miss. Then he cuts back. We said he could run. And then watch this block by number 61, Kevin Davis, in the open field. He takes Radigan and he pretty much decletes him. Here we go. Let's watch Davis again one more time right here. Davis, bam! He takes out Radigan. What a play by Davis and Narcisse. We'll take a timeout. Jeff Trailer takes a timeout. Big moment of our game. 43 seconds left, first half. After yeah, Army up 14 to 3. Here's a look at number 60, Brandon Roth. You're going to see him get rolled up right here. And it's really just kind of an, an a hit. Your friendly flyer, but not from your own teammate. And here's another look at it. It's a pretty good block, actually, that time by Makai Hart. He knocks the Army defender into Brandon Roth. And Dave, one good thing for them, Roth is coming back on the field. I think Barry Lunny has done a really good job of extending this drive so Army doesn't get the ball back again before the end of the half because they get it first in the second half. So this has been a very good four and five minute drive for UTSA. Roadrunners should have one timeout left first half. Narcisse, lots of time. Pressure from Eric Smith. Incomplete. 
Jabari Moore really closest to that. Lowell Narcisse throws that away. A smart play. And what's the plan for you now to be able to score a touchdown? You're not going to be able to live with another kick by Duplicis. You, and right here, working the middle of the field at some point, I think, has to be an option. Uh, and, you know, Navy's playing a lot. I mean, excuse me, Army's playing a lot of zone. And I think one of the things that you see when you have that type of zone coverage, you've got to be able to work in between the hash marks. 38 seconds, one timeout, second and 10 here. Narcisse. Franklin. Zakar Franklin is cruise a cool customer with more on coverage for Army. A nice grab. Get a 13. I like that play a lot. Well, you don't have to waste the time out. And again, it shows off of the arm strength, but they're going to continue to give you that. At some point, you're going to have to take a shot here with 33 seconds to go. First down. Narcisse flushed again by Duran. Lowell Narcisse escorted out of bounds by Cameron Jones, the sophomore from Carson, California, for Army. Second down, pretty much a. You see the red zone numbers for Jeff Trailer's team. And an injury. Brandon Rolf, who was just down a moment ago, Chave, is seated again for UTSA. Bad news. They almost get, well, potentially, and hopefully they don't have it for their sake. It just, just doesn't cost them a time out here. Keep in mind that Spencer Burford's star left tackle, Demetrius Allen starting left guard. Both didn't play today. We found that out last moment. So Micah Hart moved to left tackle. Josh Otis, who was the backup left tackle, started at right tackle today. It's been a makeshift offensive line as Rolf heads off. It looks like they're going to go with Terrell Haynes at the left guard position. Started the season with Dominique Pastucci at that spot. He struggled a little bit, and I thought against UAB and pass protection. And now Haynes gets his shot here in a two-minute situation. And let's see what Nate Woody decides to do with his four down lineman right here. Fourteenth play of the drive. Second down. Narcisse throws on the move. Franklin's incomplete. There is a flag down. Jones on coverage. We could have defensive holding here. Let's find out. Cameron Jones doesn't like it. Vehemently protest the call. Pass interference on the defense, number 27. The ball we placed in the spot of the foul, automatic first down. Big call. Well, again, it was pretty good protection that time. McCormick did a good job, and there was a little bit of a grab against their best red zone receiver, Franklin. He knows that, and now you have to wonder whether or not Narcisse's legs could come into play. Either him or McCormick, maybe with the timeout, you still can run the ball right here and, and give yourself a chance. Army takes a timeout here. 19 seconds left in our first half. So two timeouts left for the Black Knights and one for UTSA. They love a cash in for a touchdown here. It's been all Lowell Narcisse replacing Frank Harris, who started the BYU game, but in and out of the UTSA lineup with injuries. Narcisse has certainly earned himself plenty of playing time here today. All right, so uh, goal line type stop defensively, potentially for Army here. And of course, the Roadrunners want to cash in. What do you see as being the big keys here, Trey? Well, you've got the timeout in your back pocket, and so that gives you the option. I think one of these next couple of downs, you've got to at least either give McCormick or Narcisse a chance. They've been your best two red zone runners throughout the season. And then if you have to use that timeout, you'll still have a couple of shots you can take to the end zone to either Franklin or Cephas.
Clock management critical. North sees plenty of experience. Started seven games last year. As Harris suffered a third season ending injury in his difficult career. Off the timeout. First and goal. Narcisse, end zone, broken up. McDuffie on Franklin, flag flies. <laughs> yeah, UTSA is going to get closer here. Yeah, but McDuffie, he's still talking. He's not concerned about the flag. They've been pretty aggressive. I think the Army cornerbacks today. Pass, the Pass interference on the defense, number three. Ball we placed the one-yard line. Automatic first down. You still got 15 seconds, Dave. You still got the timeout. There's McCormick. You see where he's aligned. So maybe you give him a screen opportunity here. Something to get your best player the ball or the quarterback maybe sneak. All right, first and goal. Quick pass. Franklin, touchdown. Zakari Franklin, one of the shortest touchdown connections you'll ever see. Yeah, what a drive. And it was an excellent block that time by Oscar Cadenas. He, along with Cephas, unselfish blocks on the perimeter, opened it up for Franklin to get it in. Hunter Duplessis has the PAT for the Roadrunners. There are only 11 seconds left in the first half. That's got to be a major conference builder for UTSA. Absolutely. And I think for now when you are kind of looking and evaluating your first half, you go back and look at this drive here. It was one of the key holding call that time against Cameron Jones. And, and then you had another hold that time by Julian McDuffie. And that set this up. Get that dart screen to Franklin. And he kind of walks in effortlessly. And now when you look at Army and their evaluation of the first half, they got to be happy as well. Both of their quarterbacks have played well. The B-back position has run the ball extremely well. I think both teams have to be at least uh, moderately pleased with how they've played in the first half. Third touchdown catch this year for Franklin. That's sixth of his career. Had a really nice high point TD grab last week in that game at BYU. Cougars undefeated. Beat Houston last night. Some talk now about them maybe sneaking into the college football playoff for what has been a very different season in 2020. Duplessis trying the squib to get Army confused, but instead it's to about the 47 with looked, 10 seconds left. That kind of looked like the onside kick, <laughs> similar to uh, style that he had late in the BYU game. And why not take a shot? Are they going to take a shot? I think that's the thinking there. Maybe you get one more crack at the end zone or maybe a, a, an out route to set up Duplessis again. Wow. Risky. Because <laughs> that's at the 47. But Army is not generally known as a strong team through the air. Their freshman quarterback, <laughs> Cade Ballard, they're not going to take a shot. Take a knee instead. To end the first half from the Alamo Dome on Military Appreciation Day. And the cadets from the Mid Hudson Valley made the trip to San Antonio and have a lead at halftime. Jay, good football here. Yeah, it is. It, and, it, and it's been one of those halves where both teams know they've got a tough second half ahead. And in the first half, cadets have a lead on the Roadrunners. After the break, it's Brent and the gang. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. These teams met on this field last year. Army won 31-13 thanks to 340 rushing yards. Had 193 in the first half for Jeff Munkin and lead by four. Welcome back to San Antonio. Dave Corey joined by Justin Field Level in a moment. Well, the Army V-backs, I think, you talk about B-plus, deserved an A with the two rushing touchdowns. How about the quarterbacks, James? What grade do they get? Well, the quarterbacks have done fine. I, I think really both quarterbacks have done a very good job of decision-making, uh, whether it's in the pitch game or whether it comes down to 
handing the ball off to those B backs you referenced. But I, I think the Army defense also has been pretty good. Time now for our Sarah Pro first responders. And that run game so effective for Army. Well, that's just Atkins, a second effort by him. And, and here it was just a really Wiley gets lost in, in the traffic. And, and then Atkins, a former basketball player in high school, a couple different times here, <laughs> dribbling through this UTSA defense. And, and I think he's been very impressive along with Buchanan. I mean, to be a power forward in basketball. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> or a five, sure. <laughs> All right, those running numbers we told you about 193 in the first half on the ground for Army with their two rookie quarterbacks. No passing yards. Penalties were an issue for UTSA, especially early in that first half. And the cash in touchdown on the reception from Franklin. First touchdown allowed by Army in the last two minutes of a half all year. Second half is underway. Robinson will watch that sore of his head for a touchback. Let's go back down to Justin. Corey, they would actually, or pardon, Corey, Coach Munker would actually agree with you in your quarterback assessment. He said both Tyler and Ballard have done a very fine job in handling the offense. As for what they can clean up, it's making sure that they contain Narcisse. When I spoke to Coach Trailer about what his team needs to do better, he reminded him of that horrible feeling they've had the past two weeks. Everyone said you guys have played well, you've come so close. You need to step it up in the second half to make sure that you don't have that same horrible feeling the past two weeks of losses. And yeah, Justin, for me, I, I think it's important this first drive for UTSA's defense to kind of make a statement. They, they've kind of been pushed around up front. This defensive line needs to make a statement here early. Tyler starts the second half for Army. Quarterback makes one tackler miss, and Jalen Hayes makes the play. Return for Rashad Wisdom, safety for UTSA who's had back-to-back -back targeting calls against UAB and BYU. One more of those will miss an entire game. He's the only player in the nation with two targeting calls to this point of the season. And we spoke with Rashad this week. He's excited to be back, but he's got to change the approach in terms of the tackling. We'll break that down in a moment. And this isn't the game where you really want to be thinking about changing an approach to tackling. Tyler, late pitch. Robinson, a cut. Stopped by Robinson of UTSA. Let's take a look back at these two ejections. Targeting calls for wisdom, champ. Well, this first one, uh, I mean, you, you come in, you lower it clearly. Uh, that was against Mid Myron Mitchell. Now, this one is more dangerous to yourself. Uh, I think that last one, which to me, is the one that I was most concerned about of those two targeting fouls. But right now, it's third down and six, and he's hopefully for him not even thinking about that. He's thinking about making a play and, and, and keeping your head up. Uh, that's what he simply has to do, but he's got to keep that mentality. Ballard back. And a third down for the second time. And in trouble, Jalen Haynes gets there. Finished off by yeah. Jamal Ligon. It's going to be a penalty, though, Dave. They held number 15, Raheem Murphy, in coverage. I believe it was Mayfield who held him. Well, all right, that's at the 46-yard line marker. Now there are actually two flags down. And Wisdom, I think he held Camden Harrison. Charles Wiley is injured for UTSA outside linebacker, senior from Stockbridge, Georgia. Right. A really good leader for this defense. But he's hop, up on his feet and going to run off pretty fast. That's good news for the Roadrunners. Pretty good player at Ole Miss as well. Five and a half sacks transferred into UTSA this year. I believe this penalty is going to be against, it might be against Wisdom. We were talking about him. I thought he grabbed Harrison off the ball. Holding on the defense, number 26. 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. The result of the penalty will be a first down. It is Mayfield. Is that right? So an automatic first down. It's a huge call with Bowden in a lot of trouble and about to go down. Jalen Haynes had that sack, which is negated. He looked like he was struggling getting off the field. Well, right here, you can see he almost pulls him down. You, you, with both of them on the ground. That's Mayfield. It was easy to see from up here. And now you got to get back to trying to stop and defend. Uh, maybe even a toss coming up here. Tyler Tyler back on the field at quarterback. Midline option makes the cut. Has a nice game for Army as he gets to the 46 yard line. About seven on the run from Tyler. 
So Jeff Lunkin told us yesterday on our Zoom call, Shane, we'd see both quarterbacks. We've seen a lot of them, haven't we? Uh, we have, and that was a good job by Sandy McCoy, who used to be the fourth B back. He gets inside and lead blocks, and that's something where he's a complete B back. And that's one of the things they like about him. On second down, Adkins upended. Ligon in the vicinity. Spot looks good for an Army. First down, just shy of midfield. The game four for Anthony Adkins. He has a 66 yard touchdown run. Buchanan, a short TD burst as well for Army. The two touchdowns today for the nation's second leading rushing team. 311 rushing yards a game. And I call this the Python offense. They just squeeze <laughs> yeah, the absolutely. life out of you. That's an outstanding description. Slowly. First down. <laughs> Tyler, trouble. Tyler, down he goes. Christian Clayton, the pursuit, not fooled on the option that time. Everyone raked their own leaves, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And that was one of the big sayings this week from Tyrone Nix. He talked about doing your own job. And that time, the quickness of Clayton pays off. He's very quick going side to side, along with most of these UTSA defensive linemen. But we have not heard yet from Jalen Hayes, who's a very good player. First negative play from scrimmage today for Army. Tyler, first career passing attempt. Trouble. Down he goes. Christian Clayton. Jalen Hayes. Get to Tyre Tyler and make the sack. Very good coverage by number 21, Ken Robinson, down the field. He takes away the main threat of what Tyler's looking for. And then off the air, there's Wiley. We talked about him and cleaned up by Clayton again. You just mentioned it. Now it's third down and long. This is exactly what you're hoping for. Maybe a screen from Army. Uh, doesn't even really seem like they're going to spread you out too much here. They got Hobbs out wide. Ballard back in. He's 0 for 2 throwing today. On third and 16, fake the pitch to McCoy. Ballard the rollout. Mayfield up for the sack for UTSA. Defense cranks up a notch for the Roadrunners on this Army possession. It's an excellent call that time because you bring him Mayfield and they're rolling right into it. The cornerback blitz. And Tyrone Nix, he calls those cornerback blitzes quite a bit. And normally they've gotten home this year, both him and Tariq Woolen. Harding punting to Jones. Over the shoulder grab, retreating toward his goal line. Sheldon Jones in some trouble. Enveloped shy of the 10. What a directional punt. And that was an unbelievable directional punt. And you see this catch. When you make a punt return and go backwards, not good for the upcoming offense. Only 56 days to go in the countdown to America's game, the Army-Navy game presented by USAA on CBS Sports. Great view of the Alamo in downtown San Antonio. We're at the Riverwalk, so historic. Always great to see. It's much smaller than you imagine when you're up close. That's awesome. Air Force is coming up as well on CBS November 7th. December 12th is the Navy game. It's all about winning the CIC, the Commander in Chiefs Trophy for Jeff Monk and an Army. They did it in 2017, 2018 last year. It was Navy's turn to win it. Army's won the CIC Trophy eight times in program history. Now Cease in the offense back on the field. Throwing on first down. Franklin the catch. Good pick up, first down play for UTSA. One of the reasons they throw this out here is because of Leroy Watson, number four, the big tight end. But they're going to have to get McCormick back involved. Gain of nine. McCormick on cue. Gets by Durant. Eric Smith has the tackle, but not until he gets to the 21-yard line. Gain of three, chains move for UTSA. And, and why do I say, you see these guys going forward? Look at the block by Maka inside number 55. I mean, he just barrels through again. Play fake, Narcisse. First down, the sprint left, throwing way high to Franklin. 
with Cameron Jones on coverage for Army. Second and ten. Yeah, they, they get you right where they want you now. Uh, it's second and long. If they can, you know, hold you to four yards or less as a third long situation, which is exactly where Nate Woody wants to be. And that's the reason why I think McCormick should be more involved. And there's Woody. He, he, he can't wait to, to dial up that third down package. Trust me. Second down. McCormick right through the middle. Radigan makes the stop. Gets out to about the 26. Five more. Roadrunner yards there for Sincere McCormick. It was up to 67 yards rushing today. And he's running behind Leroy Watson again to insert block. And he's getting another block. I mean, Watson, you've got another injured offensive line, and they are falling down a lot, these offensive linemen. Take a timeout here in San Antonio. Josh Otis, senior Gulfport, Mississippi. See a lot of action at tackle in this game today. Taken off a moment ago, but walking under his own power. That's good news. Tomorrow, week six, NFL features two of the AFC's best battling for Central Division supremacy. Baker and the Browns take on undefeated Big Ben Steelers, while others will see the Broncos Patriots. It all begins with the NFL today at noon Eastern. Did you say CBS? Is that Baker and the Browns? That's for, that's a, Baker's Browns? Yeah, no, no, but this game is not about these two. This game is about Miles Garrett. Mm. And what happened what? last year at the end of the game. That's right. There's got to be some bad blood left that you may see tomorrow. Third down off the injury timeout. Garcia's time delivers over the middle to the 36. And caught. Joshua Cephas has got it. Chains move. That's the first time we've seen him throw over the middle all afternoon, Dave. And a pretty accurate throw. Cephas makes the catch slightly behind him. Gain of 11. You're right, good grab. Much needed. UTSA first down. See if they feed Sincere here. McCormick up the middle. Not a lot doing. We talked top of the broadcast how he's got to be patient, right? To let those holes develop. Yeah, well, in, in that case, everybody had, they're doing a lot of two gapping up front. And what that means is you, the defensive linemen have more than one gap. And so they're staying uh, really with good distance from the offensive linemen and able to make a lot of plays. You see that particularly from Ryan Duran and Nick Stokes, number 91 and 94, they played well inside today. Duran involved in that stop of McCormick. Second and ten. End around play. Dingo, the UMass transfer's got some wheels. Play was strung out perfectly. McDuffie with the speed for Army. Read it beautifully. Caused the tackle for loss. And the play backs up several yards. And you look down here at the bottom, you're going to see they come around. And they think they've got a block with Watson, but he beats the block of Cephas, and he's able to force it to his teammates. Lowry cleans it up. Now this is where you don't want to be against Army. Third down and 14. They're going to keep everything in front of them. Top down approach. Narcis. Time delivers. Franklin juggles and then lost it incomplete. Roadrunners now 6 of 11. Third down tries. And it's punt time for Jeff Taylor's bunch. Well, once again, the coverage is at least satisfactory on the outside, but you got to bring that in. You can't bobble a good throw and waste an opportunity maybe to go for it on fourth down. Now the pressure is on Lucas Dean. He's got to get off a good punt right here. Tyler Robinson, electrifying freshman, South Floral Park, New York. He had some issues on the punt return last week. His first attempt against the Citadel on that home win at Mikey. No attempt here for the speedster. And a timeout. A close game between Army and UTSA. This is a great tradition against a new program, relatively speaking. Army has 701 wins. UTSA has played 112 games. That's it in their 10 years. So newcomers to college football, but really good this year. You know, the one thing that I love the most, we're going to take a look at this Sonic quarterback comparison coming up right here in a second. And it's you, you look at what both quarterbacks have done. When we talked to Jeff Monk and Brent Davis, they talked about Tyler having maybe a little bit more speed than Ballard. 
Ballard hasn't really gotten in the act yet in terms of throwing, but he's made some very good pitches on the outside in terms of reading the defense. UTSA able to get to the Army backfield in that last drive. Well, this is because of good coverage in the back end. You don't see it, but that's the reason why you had to pull the ball down. And then you had Clayton, and this is another example, uh, running into on a boot principle. They're trying to throw it, but Tyrone Nix dials up the right defense. Pitch fake, Hobbs comes to the near side. Ortiz Hobbs. Wow. And wisdom makes a wow. much better fundamental <laughs> tackle than we see with the targeted calls. Good play. Well, this is, I mean, this is just speed. It, it's just, just running somebody down because I want to get he runs by three teammates on the way to the ball. When you watch the film, watch who's running by guys. That's probably the best player on the other team's defense. He's a running by guys player. <laughs> I love that. New, new category. <laughs> Teams on question leader, leading tackler. Back in the lineup, second half. Whoa. Nearly a big blow up from Jalen Haynes. The pitch play didn't go very far at all. Antonio Parks <laughs> came up and made a huge hit, but Haynes was right in the face of Ballard in a heartbeat. Uh, you called it, Dave. It was a great call. Look at that. Bam! Oh. And I, you've got to get rid of it. Read me. <laughs> and then all of a you, you get an excellent low tackle by Parks, and he does keep his head up. And now you got third down and four. Can you stop? The 260-pound Buchanan. He's coming right at you. I think that's where they're giving it to right now. Only three or six, first down, third down try so far. Buchanan lumbering ahead, and that second lunge got him the first down again for Army. It's a gain of five for Jacoby Buchanan. St. Charles, Missouri product, 260-pounder. I'm sure Lindenwood in St. Charles, Missouri, they would have liked to have gotten him, but Army stole him. <laughs> and now he's doing an outstanding job for this football team. How in motion. Tyler the keep. Wisdom finishes off the play. Tackled by Guidry. Armed Forces football proudly sponsored by USAA. Last drive for Army, seven plays, only went 10 yards because of the heat in the backfield and the sacks. But it ate up five minutes, and here they go again with a long drive for Jeff Munkin. Using clock. Four-point lead can sometimes seem like 40 <laughs> when you're looking up yeah. at the scoreboard against these guys. Second down, Tyler keeps, runs into trouble. Ken Robinson got there. Marco Guidry in the middle as well, and there's the rugby scrum, and a flag comes in late. This will be an interesting call. Could be a game-changing call if it goes potentially in the roadrunner's favor. It's a gain of four. Because that was second down. Billy Williams is our referee today. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 26 of the defense. 15-yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Corey Mayfield and Corey Chavis, my question is why? Why? Well, he's not even involved in the play. Yeah, there it is, that, that late jump. Man, I don't know about that call. I'm okay. sorry. I mean, you're jumping up. Okay. He's got some energy. Did he harm anybody? He hit his own guy. <laughs> Maybe not the smartest move, but. Timeout called by UTSA. They could have saved that flag, Dave. I'm with you. I'm with you. It cost the Roadrunners 15 yards. Corey Mayfield had that penalty a moment ago that cost the Roadrunners 15 yards. 14-10 game here. Let's take a look at our top 25 scoreboard brought to you by Tums. I mean, Trevor Lawrence and Clemson. Wow, five touchdown passes for the quite possible Heisman Trophy well, winner this year. I mean, I think that 30 to 22 victory by South Carolina, give them credit bouncing back from an 0-2 start. They got right down in Nashville last week against my Commodores, and it looks like Auburn felt some of that wrath. Ballard back in. McCoy, trouble. The smackdown physical tackle 
right away. Brandon Matterson got there immediately. Back to Justin. Guys, D coordinator Tyrone Nix just gave his group a passionate plea in the huddle after the timeout, saying that we have to step it up, stop the penalties, let's stop someone. Everyone broke the huddle, saying that make sure that you do not make any more mental mistakes as we just saw. It's got to happen, Justin, no question, against Army, especially with a ball control offense. Tyler, loose. Tyler. Pylon. Touchdown. Like he was shot out of a cannon at Mikey Stadium. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler for 37 yards. sure that ball crossed over the pylon maybe they'll look at it again but apparently it did before that foot went out of bounds really close good catch now Salyers PAT for Army Cade Ballard first start tired Tyler first snaps as a quarterback and shave they're making it happen and, and, and when you talk to the staff they were confident because they knew Tyler had speed and so when you go back and forth and Tyler gets in the game it's a different animal you, you're almost adjusting to a brand new offense when these different quarterbacks come in and it comes down really here to responsibility and Rashad wisdom gets cut and when you get cut in the open field and you're responsible for the quarterback, you really have no last line of defense. And he kind of gets tripped on the way uh, to tackling Tyler. And after he gets past Wisdom, well, you know the rest. 82 rushing yards, a touchdown for Tyre Tyler in his first career snaps at Army for Jeff Munkin. And we asked the coach of the Zoom call, and this is a new experience with the Zoom call, watching faces. All right, what's the quarterback situation? We thought possibly Jamel Jones or Chris Anderson would be back. I asked that, and the coach paused for a while, and he said, Cade Ballard will start. And we weren't sure if he was serious. Well, these two QBs are serious, and they have done the job for Army here today. What a story. Salyers. Kicks the dingle. Finds a gap. Look out. Got some speed. Flags are down, though, so this could come back. Let's find out. Coach has told us he's the fastest road runner on the roster. Well, he looked that was a bit burst. <laughs> Last week against BYU, something similar when he bobbled the kickoff return. During the return, a legal block in the back. Number 36 of the return team. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. And that's uh, literally kind of a backbreaker in, in that sense. And you're talking about being all the way down out to the 47 yard line. And now you're starting to drive at the 25, your own 25. It's almost like you fair caught or had a touchback. So another big play eliminated from this UTSA attack. Devastating penalty. On first down, Narcisse throws, Cephas catches. Joshua Cephas. Cunningham makes the play defensively for Army. Good pickup first down for UTSA. All right, so Chave, if you're the road runners, you're down 11. What's the mode? Do you want to score fast? Do you want to stick to the game plan? What happens here? At some point, you're going to have to find a matchup, and that's what they've struggled to do today. They're attacking areas of the field, but they haven't been able to find a matchup. McCormick slides ahead. He's shot by half a yard. So third and short here coming up for Sincere McCormick and UTSA. We talked in the break about the top-down defense. You really like what Army's done, right? Right, and when I say top-down, that means if you're playing in man coverage or zone, everything is deep. 
to short. So you're never going to you're going to allow those short completions. And we've seen Narcisse with a number of those today. They're inconsequential in terms of the final outcome, however. Third and short. QB run, trouble sent backwards. Jeremiah Lowry immediately got to Lowell Narcisse. Radigan and company were there. Let's see. It was John Radigan. It was, but it was actually, you were right because they caused it. And this is not something they've done a lot of. They gave the first down. And one of the wow. things he did was hammer the ball, and, and that's taking it on with your outside shoulder so Radigan could make that play. But big pickup, and now they're going to take a look at it. That was a good spot, I thought. Really good based on the run and the forward progress of the ball. So let's see. Let's take a look here. Well, the line they gain is the 35 yard line. Let's see if the ball ever gets to the 35. It's about the ball. I don't know, Shay. Yeah. No. I don't think he got it. I think he's about half yard shot. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and again, I, I, you, you know, Dave, you, you made a good call originally. You, you talked about Lowry. It's his responsibility versus that pulling offensive lineman to allow the linebacker to scrape over the top to make the play. So Lowry actually causes that play, and that was a huge play, and I think a huge decision moving forward for Barry Lunny Jr. They haven't gone for it a lot on fourth down. I think this will be short, and what will you do? Are you going to essentially put the game on the line, and how many possessions can you get the rest of the game, Dave? If you punt it back to Army now and they score, and they get the ball again, will you get it back enough? So you got to be thinking about possessions now with 235 in the third quarter. After review, it's been determined that the runner did not get to the line to gain and will be a half a yard short. So we fourth down. I think we got that right. Half a yard short, so well, Radigan and the, 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 the bigger defense thing, hold now. It's fourth the, down. The, the bigger thing is they're going to go for it, and that's what we were really talking about because that's what you got to be thinking about now. What is your play? McCormick, or do you trust this offensive line to just give the ball to McCormick and, and see if he can get really your, this game is on the line on this play? No runners two of five this year. Fourth down tries. Narcisse, wait a minute. Flags first. That's a false start. And that backs him up. Five. Boy, another devastating penalty for UTSA here. That's been a problem. 11 penalties against Texas State, a number of penalties against Stephen F. Austin. Seventy nine point four penalty yards per game for UTSA. It's not a good number. And actually, here's the call. Disconcerting signals on the defense. Oh, that's a five yard penalty from the spot of from the previous spot. That will result in a first down. Well, that's a much different story. Well, what, they, what they're saying is that those signals caused the false start and caused the movement. So you make those signals inside, and that's what actually causes the movement, and that's not legal. And you can see that movement right there to the left. That's what caused them to move. All right, first down. It's big for UTSA. Narcisse, pressure, flushed, throws off his back foot looking for Franklin. And it's incomplete with Eric Smith in the vicinity on coverage for Army. Good pressure again against Narcisse. Yeah, Ryan Duran has had a really good game, number 91. He's done a really good job in contain because this team runs a lot of stunts on defense. And what I mean by that is the defensive linemen go inside and the the defensive tackles might go back outside. And, and that is where he has to get contained. He's done a really good job of doing that all afternoon. On second down. Narcis time over the middle. Franklin, that'll catch. He's been busy today. Cameron Jones, the tackle for Army. Gain of 21 first down UTSA. And he looks off to his left and then he comes back to well actually comes back to his left and a very good strong throw in the middle of the field. Ten catches, 170 yards, and the touchdown for Franklin today has been clutch for UTSA. And a career best tying seven grabs last week in Provo. 
And that one score loss at undefeated BYU. Yeah, what about a double move at some point from this offense? First down, McCormick tries the left side, turns the corner, sends Sam McCormick, first down, and then some, but a flag flies. Markwell Broughton was there to make contact for Army. Let's check out the marker. Legal block in the back on the offense, number 18. Ten yard pillar for the spot of foul. Replay first down. So Carter Franklin, Jay. A little bit of a tic tac call again. I, I, it wasn't an illegal block in the back. I mean, so you, you've got to make the call by the rule, but kind of barely brushed the, the, the defensive back, Cameron Jones. I'm sure even he was surprised that they made that call. It was not. Very strong block in the back. If you're going to block somebody in the back, get your money's worth. He, he didn't get his money's worth on that one. Spot foul sets up first and five here. But the gates a really nice run from McCormick. 87 rushing yards so far today. Sincere McCormick has to double back, then lunges ahead on a good second effort. That's a pretty good pick up there with Carter involved in the stop. With 45 seconds and counting remaining in the third quarter. Here's second down. McCormick again. Nolan Cockrell and a block field goal in that season opening win against Middle Tennessee in the Centerville, Virginia. It's Northern Virginia right outside of D.C., just 20 minutes. Makes the play. Third down. The Roadrunners will take their time here in the final seconds, and that should be the last play of the third. So three complete. Army by 11. Looking for a road win will be their first away from Mikey Stadium this year. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. Football today here in the Alamo City, San Antonio, Texas. Military City, USA. Revisit our keys to the game brought to you by Ryan Chase. Well, the B-backs have been big. We, we've talked about that. The top-down approach. There's not been a lot of big plays. The Army's done a good job of keeping things in front of them. Uh, fourth down hasn't been a factor. And then the clickbait, there have been some big runs that have gotten out of the gate, uh, not only from uh, the B-back, but also the quarterbacks for Army. Big play to start the fourth. Third and short, McCormick. John Radigan got there, made the stop, and that spot looked shy by about half a yard. Fourth down coming up, huge play here for UTSA. I think you got to give it right back to your best player, McCormick. And there's no question to me that that would be the call. And if you can't get a, first, a half a yard with one of the top running backs in the nation, then maybe you don't deserve to win this game. And that's the bottom line. Big play. Narcisse going to keep. Narcisse first down and then some. Motors ahead, dragging tacklers inside the 15. And Ian Leroy Watson are pumped up. Although Narcisse is down on the field. The helmet came off. It was after the play, not as a result of the play. Gain of 20. Excellent block inside by Maka. He just throws around two people. And then Narcisse, just the determination to carry 
a number of tacklers and that was another really good block on Eric Smith by McCormick who's had a really good day today blocking off the ball production from McCormick and then I think his leg may get may have gotten caught up here late on the tackle. Maybe that's why he's down. I didn't see any other thing that possibly could have happened in that situation. Wow. This is big. So Frank Harris who's been in and out of the UTSA lineup will be coming in at quarterback when we return to San Antonio. Fourth quarter is underway. Looks to be a very serious injury for Lowell Narcisse, unfortunately, for UTSA teammates trying to wish him well. He is on the cart and will leave the game here in San Antonio after that great 20 yard run. Not one but two ACL tears in high school on route to LSU. Let's go down to Justin. Yeah, Dave, right before Narcisse was put on the cart, Frank Harris stopped warming up and walked over to Narcisse to check in on him, said a quick prayer. The coaching staff told us throughout our meetings this week that this quarterback room is com is extremely close, and it shows it right there. Frank Harris considers him a brother. So Harris, who himself has battled such tremendous injury issues, Justin, is called upon again and watching him walk around shave and warm before the game and even now Harris is not 100 percent sprained knee against Middle Tennessee here on air a few weeks back came back against BYU last week had to leave with the same knee injury but he's back here replaces Narcisse and it's first down another lefty Frank Harris throws Franklin open end zone has it Touchdown, there is a flag down. So let's see. Zakari Franklin, the grab in the end zone for UTSA. Pass interference on the defense, number 47. That's always the climb. Result plays a touchdown. Count it for the Roadrunners. One pass attempt and a touchdown for Harris off the bench. For UTSA, Franklin's second touchdown catch of the game. Well, he was saying that he was talking about number 47, but it was number 27 right here just grabbing Franklin in, in the red zone. And that's what a lot of people have done against him and his size in this part of the field. Duplessis had it blocked, and it's no good. Block PAT. That's all this, this Duffy team, got there. All this team does is block field goals and punts. Tell you what, man, they, they came close to blocking a couple of punts early in the season, and then they blocked an extra point today. So it's Cameron Jones on coverage. Had the P.I., but it is a touchdown to TD for UTSA. <laughs> College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Exchange, welcoming home veterans to their exchange shopping benefits by Corona Premier. Lower carbs, lower calories, 100% Corona. And by Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. Coming up next, it's Inside College Football. As the crew gets you up to speed on all the day's news and highlights right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Break down the Trevor Lawrence. Touchdown party. 73-7, <laughs> they won in Atlanta over Georgia Tech today. Big question I've got for you is Miami back. Are they for real. No they're, they're, they're a good football team but you say are they back. I mean being back is winning 50 plus straight games at home. They're not that type of Miami. They're still a good football team. See to be back is championship contender type the way they were in the day. Absolutely. Did look like a major injury there with the 10. Plus has had that PAT block. He had been 17 of 17. We know he's a perfect. Now 12 or 12 on field goals, 21 in a row after hitting here today. Robinson wants a fair catch this time and makes it at the three. Army gets it at the 25. Back to Brent Stover in New York with an update. Guys, Auburn trailing South Carolina by eight. Final seconds, Bo Nix scrambling but comes up short on fourth down. And the Gamecocks beat Auburn for the first time since 1933. What? 1933? That is crazy. And, and after the way they won last weekend against Arkansas, 
I think that they deserve maybe just bad karma. <laughs> wow. Barnard into the game. Be back here. Tyre Tyler is the quarterback. Pitching this time. Robinson tracked down. Antonio Parks read that and drops Robinson. It's a loss of three. That's a tremendous play. <laughs> Antonio Parks has really impressed me the last couple of weeks. Now you watch him come up. You got to break down. We talk about tackling so much and hitting. Look at that. Breaks down perfectly and then he wraps with his arms. Unbelievable. A wrap tackle. That is outstanding. That, uh, boy, that gets me excited. Now that's football. That's a great football play by Antonio Parks. Transfer from Arizona in the Pac-12. Second and 13. Tyler, the option. Tyler looks for room. Guess who's there? It's Parks again. Flag flies. Helmet is off. And this could be face mask here against UTSA. An automatic first down. Tyler's got to come out of the game. Lost his helmet shape. Less is a penalty. Let's find out. Personal here. foul. Yes, definitely. Face mask on the defense number four. 15-yard penalty on the end of the run. Automatic first down. I must have jinxed him. <laughs> the, he comes up this time. He just says, forget about a good tackle. I'm just going to take his helmet off. Oh. <laughs> we go from one extreme to the other, and he's lucky because Madison was coming, and Madison doesn't know your helmet's about to come off. He's just coming for the number two. And so this was scary. Watch Madison. Man. Now, Ballard's back in the game here, Che, but Tyre Teller does not have to leave the game if you lose the helmet via penalty. Right. If it comes off incidentally for safety reasons, of course, head injuries, safety first in college football, then has to leave for a play. But Ballard's back because we've seen a lot of rotation in this game between the quarterbacks for Army. First down. Ballard throwing. Here comes the heat. Harrison has a catch. Cam Harrison back in the Army lineup. And it's a big pickup. Robinson, the track down tackle. As Harrison's return and played his first game this year, there is a flag down in the backfield, gain of 53. Personal foul. Rough in the pass. On the defense, number 45. Half the distance to the goal added on to the end of the run. Automatic first step. That's the Quarius Henry. Mm. Boy, he got a really good shot on Ballard. And just after the play, I think maybe they thought that it might have been there was no helmet to helmet contact. Seemed like he hit him right after he released the ball. But maybe they apparently thought he drove him into the ground unnecessarily. First career completion. For Cade Ballard, the Army quarterback. How about that? Atkins in at B-back here. First and goal. Ballard. End zone touchdown, Army. His first career rushing touchdown. The freshman from Tennessee. Terrific today for the Black Knights. It was pretty much a quarterback lead behind number 23, Anthony Atkins. And when we talked to the coaches, they thought that was the next step for him to become as good of a blocker as he was a runner. And I think you're starting to see the, the fruition of that on that block for Ballard. And the hole of Brooks Jose. Salyers, true on the PAT. And Army responds. Family loves it. For good reason. K. Ballard, end zone, touchdown, Black Knights. There's Kane and K. The Ballards, they're pretty happy right now. Kane was his son's high school coach, two-time state player of the year in Tennessee, and two-time state champ, was 30-0 as a starter. He's playing well here today for sure. College football continues tonight, 6 Eastern. Conference USA class, Marshall takes on Louisiana Tech right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Marshall's outscored its opponents, Jay, 114-21. First thundering herd trip 
to Ruston, Louisiana since 1942. And Brennan Knox, reigning Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year, 110 rushing yards a game this year. The third under Doc Holliday can score it, can't they? Yeah, they can. And then I think the infusion of a brand new quarterback, you're thinking your quarterback's going to come back this year and Green doesn't come back. And then you go with a freshman in Wells and he's just been outstanding in spots. And when you have that type of transfer fluidly, then you've kind of seen the results. B.J. Daniels. The off kickoff return man and former starting running back here at UTSA he gets his first attempt and is dropped at about the 21 back down to Justin. Dave it's time now for a day in the life of the cadet brought to you by Verizon. It features fifth year senior Amadeo West on this very same field last year. He suffered a season ending biceps tendon when players came into the training well the training room to wish him well. West response was at least I had to get a chance to serve my country. That's the kind of kid he is. His coaching staff loves him Dave and Corey. Look at the day in the life. Look at the classes. And Amadeo West we met with him yesterday by Zoom. It was a pleasure. McCormick. Radigan tra can't track him down. Neither can Broughton. And finally, it's Cunningham who gets there to make the play on Sincere McCormick. Picks up 22 much needed Roadrunner yards and a first down. He's had some big runs today, and it's been off of the right side. They're going to pull around this time, but they have a couple of linemen going from the left to the right. And then you can see it's elusiveness to get by Broughton in the open field. Harris is taking over for the injured Lowell Narcisse. Play fake. The pump fake runs with it. Invasive. Frank Harris picks up eight in the first down run. It gets to the 49 of Army. Harris has been through three season ending injuries. And they can't waste a lot of time now, right? Dave. They've got to really keep up the pace. They're not going to necessarily get enough, maybe one more possession. You've got to count on getting it in on this possession. A touchdown, six. Sincere McCormick tries the right side. Duran trying to bounce him toward the boundary. Flag comes in late. There's a lot of contact. That could be a defensive penalty. Let's see. A physical confrontation. Gain of eight if it stands. Personal foul. Targeting on the defense. The previous play is under review. Okay, Billy Williams didn't give us a number. It looks like McDuffie, though, Chave, was the player along the sideline there. It was. It was a good call. A good call okay. by you. You're going to see it right here. He's going to come in and wham. You want to talk oh, about yeah. targeting and you want to talk about Rashad Wisdom. Uh, here's an example of it on the other side. Clearly leading with the crown of the helmet within the rule from that aspect. That's a check mark. I'd say by it's definition. Qualified for the game. Yeah, and that was confirmed very quickly the by the replay booth. Will be added on to the so end of the, the star corner, Julian McDuffie, the junior from Snellville, Georgia, maybe the fastest player on the Army team out for this game in the first half of their game next week with Mercer. Well, we got to make sure you, you, you check out that corner that's at the top of the screen now. That's Caleb John, number six. He's played a lot this year. And, you know, he had a very good pass breakup against ULM. He's going to come up and play some press. But you want to make sure that he's ready to go if you're the quarterback. Harris, first down, McCormick, lots of room. Sims here, McCormick, first down and then some. John makes the tackle along with Eric Smith. 16-yard gain. Today's red zone being brought to you by Verizon. Harris. Rolls left, throws nearly intercepted. Cameron Jones, the breakup, had a shot at a pick. And it sets up second down. A dangerous pass. They do a lot of this sprinting out with Harris. This time you see Wes, he's a pretty good job of containing just an inaccurate throw. And then Jones comes off of his coverage and nearly takes one maybe back to the house. Great opportunity for Army. Does get the PBU, just not the INT. Yeah, well, those are the, those are the <laughs> that's what you want. Those are the PBUs in the film room. You get some flack about. Yeah, that's right. Second down. 
Harris thought about running. Lost end zone looking for Franklin. Some contact there. It's incomplete. And no penalty flag. Recovered from Cameron Jones again. Remember, he had the penalty earlier, pretty good blitz by Morrison, and this time Franklin's lucky he doesn't get the foul. Yeah. Because he kind of just pushes him down. You'll I'm see him. It. Look at that. I mean, I don't know that Franklin isn't lucky that was not a pass, offensive pass interference. And now it's third down. You got to be efficient here. And where's Cephas at? The number two, he's in the slot right here. Third down, big play. Harris flips to McCormick. Dropped. John Radigan got there and made the play. Yeah, well, I, I don't know that that's going to. You know, maybe that's the play that, that, that you're setting up for to get a little bit closer for this fourth down because uh, you're hoping McCormick can make somebody miss. Now you've only got one chance. You got to take a shot to the end zone. Down 12, 10 and a half minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Army's bench gets emotional. They'll go for it on fourth and goal. Play of the game. Harris, the sprint. Harris looks for help. Harris, not going to get there. Markwell Broughton makes the play defensively. And UTSA turns it over on downs. He got seven, but not enough. Army gets it back. No, you, you, you've got to it, it, throw the ball into the, the end zone. And once you get out here and you're going to make the decision to run, good rush by West. Now run. you got to go now vertical. You can't keep floating because you get past the line of scrimmage. And you, that means you gave up. And you're going to really get coached hard by Barry Lunning Jr. in this situation again because you're trying to win a football game. And, and getting seven yards or whatever you said he got uh, was simply a give up to me. You've got to throw that ball into the end zone. A learning experience for Harris, as you see Jeff Munkin, he, he's really excited on the Army sidelines. Brought the sophomore from Lawrenceville, Georgia. He's had a tremendous year defensively for the Black Knights. Ballard, the current QB. Robinson tries the left side and glides ahead. Gives Army some much needed real estate close to the nine. The failure by UTSA Chave, only the second time in 24 red zone drives this year without scoring both on a loss of downs that's our ace statistician Rick Weiner the doc is back Rose glad to have Rick with us the, the big the problem the, and, and, and I'm glad you brought that stat up and we'll get to it after this play and kind of kind of give you the problems with with their offense play goes up the middle now and go, the spot looks good for a first down gain of five again for Army now you were talking about that stat a second ago you can see Buchanan saying, hey, we're, we're, we're trucking on along. But the problem for UTSA has been too many field goals. With Frank Harris in the lineup or the, the, the carousel of quarterbacks, uh, you're talking about nine field goals in those 22 times or 21 out of 22 or whatever the stat was you gave. And, and you have to get sixes. And that's what's been the problem, the Achilles heel. And, and now they're putting more pressure on their defense here. Armed Forces football proudly sponsored by Verizon. First down. Tyler back in the game. That midline option. Ken Robinson. Along with Kalechi Wachuku make the play. Justin has an update on Lowell Narcisse. Yeah, guys, Narcisse is currently on his way to a hospital. He's accompanied by his mother, Stacy, in the van. I got a chance to catch up with his aunt, Belinda. She told me that he's in good spirits. He's surrounded by family. He had a lot of people here at the game. As you alluded to earlier, he had a lot of surgeries with the ACL, successive years in high school. Wishing the best for him. The family is at least surrounding him. Thanks, Justin, for that great update. And yes, from all of us at CBS Sports Network, we hope Lowell is okay. And it's tough for such a great teammate as his coaches call them in our chat with them this week. Tower hands off. Power the run. That's a big time tackle. Uh, that, that, that's going to give you an opportunity here to get the ball back. And we talk about tackle. He knows wisdom uh, coming up big here in this, this part of the game. Now you've got to maybe think about here's a little bit of the replay. Watch wisdom from the inside out. Look at that wrap tackle. That's a perfect job. Talking about improving your tackling technique. 
now you've got an opportunity to get off the field. You're almost guaranteed, I believe, to get the be back in this situation once again. It's Adkins lumbers through traffic. Stopped and about half a yard shy. It looks like of the first down. And with a Trevor Harmon's in the play, James. Sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me. A two-score lead. You're going to go for it here. You're going to put the nail in the coffin. How many teams do this? This is part of the analytics approach that this team uses. Seven minutes to go. If you get the first down now, their win probability UTSA dramatically decreases. Wow. That's the reason for going for it here. First, fourth down attempt of the game. Up the middle, Buchanan. Ligon got there. Let's see the spot, which looks good for an Army first down. Each team saying they've got it. Chains move, first down, Black Knights. And now you see why that possession, that the previous possession where Harris didn't throw it in the end zone was so important. Time is coming off the clock. They're backed up at their own 24-yard line, and they go for it and get it on fourth down. They take a different approach. I, I, it, we'll get into it as this fourth quarter goes on. Very in, interesting how Army manages these games. Pitch play, Artis Hobbs looks for the edge, has a cutback. It's smoked on the play by Brandon Matterson, who came up and got physical. And knock down Artis Hobbs. What a huge call on fourth down. You're right. How many teams would ever do that so deep in their own territory? I can't think of anybody. But it's by the book with analytics for Jeff Munkin and his staff. And they got it by half a yard. And this is the closest you'll get to an NFL game actually watching Army play because of the lack of possessions. That's why the plays in the NFL are magnified so much week to week. You get significantly less possessions than you will get in college football normally and, and that's why Army's attack is very efficient and, and they're one of the best 25 teams in the country. Tyler. Slides ahead. Ken Robinson makes the play defensively for UTSA but another nice pickup. Gain of four more for Tyre Tyler. First career snaps. Of any sort. That Army, third down and short, but third and two could, the way things are going, for Jeff Muggan, they're going to use third and fourth down to try to move the chains again. They understand clock management. They understand how to basically put your, te your team in the best position to win. And now you've got the unbalanced line over here to the left, and they're probably going to go that way. McCoy, first down. And then some for the big B-back. Gain of five, chains move yet again for Army. UTSA. Timeout called by UTSA. Jeff Trailer told us this week, likes to call him on defense. Goes back to his basketball coaching days in high school in Gilmer, Texas. Twenty-eight sixteen. Army a two-score lead here on the road in San Antonio. Take a look at today's old trapper. Beef jerky player of the game. First career start for Cade Ballard from tiny Greenville, Tennessee. It's a very small town outside Nashville. The long pass play is first career completion to Cam Harrison back in the Army lineup. First career touchdown run for the youngster. And Brent Davis, Jay, the offensive coordinator, told us via Zoom yesterday, didn't think the moment would be too big for this freshman who didn't play at the prep school last year, as most plebes coming in do, freshman year at Army, because he had a back injury. So this has been it for him, and he's delivered. He's delivered, and, and Tyler's in the game right now. As a matter of fact, who's he's been pretty good too. Yeah, so I think it's been a it's been a, a, a cumulative effort. Agreed. Kalechi Wachuku, the tackle, maybe. <laughs> Tyler just keeps the legs turning. At five eight, he is maybe tough to see sometimes, and tough for a tackle. He is elusive. Big up a seven, sorry, Jay. No, my, I, my bad, Dave. But the, the, the Army's offensive line, guys like Dean Powell, uh, they, they play well. They didn't have Mason Collin check today, and uh, I, I think Luke McCleary's experience it paid off at the left tackle. He's played and he really started a, a lot of games this year at, at times. So uh, they've got a pretty, pretty good depth along their offensive line. Yeah. 
Second and three. Buchanan upended. Spot is maybe a hair shy of the mark. It's really close. The two quarterbacks in this one have combined for more than you know, 196 rushing yards, almost 202 touchdowns. Tyler had the 37 yard touchdown run. Gain of three. Timeout called again by UTSA. It is a first down for Army. And they are in great shape here to try to win their first road game of the season. Very good football team. Agreed. They eliminated the penalties. That's a little bit more penalties than normal earlier in the year. But they've gotten those under control. I think their special teams is outstanding. Uh, I think their punter helps out. Zach Harding, he's underrated in terms of the management of a game. We were talking about that early. I, I think there's a question mark when it comes to their field goal kicking. If you get late in the game, I, I'm not sold on Salyers necessarily yet. Uh, but he's been around the program for a while. Still has to prove he can get it done in a clutch game. But this is certainly a top 25 team. Uh, I think that their performance against Cincinnati did nothing to me but enhance their reputation. Uh, they have a chance for double digit wins potentially, but I don't know if they have enough games. Come with you. Really good team. Jeff Munkin said after the Citadel win last week, 14 9, that he thought they played ineptly on offense. This is not the option that. They've installed with this triple option look. Much better today. Almost 300 rushing yards. Balls out. Wiley had the grab from behind on Tyler. Now the ball is out. Roadrunners say they've got it. Let's see. That would be huge. They do. Roadrunner football. And a huge turnover of the Army offense with 347 to go here in the fourth. But one thing we know, with just one timeout, with no timeouts left now for UTSA, you got to get it done quickly and maybe rely on an onside kick. Wiley grabbed Tyler from behind. The ball came out. Robinson had the big hit. He dislodged it. A couple of players had a shot at it. It looked like Wiley got on top of that. Right next to Monkey there. So big turnover opportunity here for the Roadrunners who failed to score on fourth and goal last time they had the ball. First turnover of the game. Harris on first down to the air. Franklin the catch. Cunningham knocks him out of bounds for the Black Knights. Gain of 20, first down here for the Roadrunners. Scored an onside kick. Here's Harris. Steps into the pocket. Watson the drop. His second drop of the day with Radigan right on the doorstep looking to make a hit. Incomplete. Right here, you get a little bit of a two deep zone. So he attacks the outside, and Cunningham can't get there. This team has been very good in two minute situations. Talking about Dr. Rick Weiner earlier, our stats guy. He talked about how they have been as efficient as anybody in, in the two minute situations that the end of halves. So they need to get a touchdown here to create that situation. On second down, way wide and incomplete on the ball intended there for Franklin. Either the wrong route, the wrong throw, or both, but it's incomplete. And third down coming up. Well, he's been inconsistent in terms of his accuracy and ball placement throughout the year. He actually has sometimes done better on the run, Dave, with a lot of his completions. Now, one thing he is very accurate on is big post routes. They try to post route early in the game. Uh, will they attempt something in between the numbers with this coverage? Third down. QB draw. Harris drops shy of what he needed, which is the 18 yard line. So, fourth down coming up, gain of six. And of course, they got to go for it here. Nolan Cockrell had the tackle. Down by 12, under three to go, and no timeouts in the fourth quarter. Need a high percentage throw. Got to have it if you're the Roadrunners. Over the middle, Dingle, incomplete. Brunton coverage. And on downs again, the Army defense takes over. Army's D stands tall again against UTSA. 
It was a situation where uh, Nate Woody decided we're going to give you an opportunity to play some man coverage. It's fourth down, mano a mano. And, and Brighton, we're going to let you cover a wide receiver and you go against Dingle, their fastest, and make a play. And you see Jeff Munkin clapping. Well, he's clapping because he talked about it. He, he, the third time around, he got an opportunity to hire Nate Woody, and this was definitely wor well worth it, the wait, because Woody is an outstanding coordinator. He coordinated a lot of those uh, Appalachian State defenses over the last four or five years up through 2018. Really good defensive coordinator. Ballard in the game. Tosses to Robinson. Physical play. Stays in bounds, most importantly. Picks up a couple on a first down run. And no timeouts for the Roadrunners. Jeff Munkin and company sitting pretty here looking for their fifth win of the year. On what is currently an 11 game schedule. Special shout out to Bob Beretta, one of the outstanding athletic department officials at Army. It was Jeff Munkin told us yesterday in our Zoom call had his shuffle reschedule the, the schedule over and over again with so many cancellations, postponements due to the pandemic. Second down. Up the middle and to about the 31 is Buchanan. Galechi Wachuku makes the stop for UTSA. Gain of six. And that clock just continues to roll. Coming up, Mercer on CBS Sports Network next week. And Air Force on CBS. Commander in Chief Trophy game. On the road against Tulane, they had a thrower last night. Lost to SMU. Georgia Southern. Jeff Munkin's former program. Well, they'd have to go perfect to get to those 10 wins. Mm -hmm. And clearly, you might still have a chance to get to the 10 win mark in a bowl game if you're able to get to one. So uh, things are looking up and looking nice for this Army team after a 5 and 8 season a year, year ago. First down for McCoy, gain of three. Jeff Munkin pumps the fist in the sideline because he knows they've done it. Shane Mover again for Army. And look at the head coach. Well, I think he's excited because of the fact that he's played with two quarterbacks who never played before. I mean, that's I'm excited for him for that. <laughs> right. I mean, it's an amazing storyline. And, and not only is it a storyline, that the guys came in and they both played well. I mean, clearly, the last drive didn't necessarily go as well as they would have liked. Cade Ballard, first career start, will in this game get to take his first career victory formation knee. That's got to feel pretty sweet for the freshman from Greenville, Tennessee. The Army's going to win this one on the road. 28-16 to move to 5-1. Five, five win season last year. Very disappointing after back-to-back -back commander in chief trophies. But clearly, Army is back. And a military appreciation day so fitting with Joint Base San Antonio, largest installation of its kind in the country here in the Alamo City to win for a second straight year in this building. No easy matter. They'll take it by 12. Very good football team that they were able to beat today. And UTSA is not going anywhere. I think Jeff Trailer has this program headed in the right direction. But Jeff Munkin, they've had success here in Army really over the last three to four years. This program, this is what they're about, about winning games and winning games on the road. Best start continued since 96. That team won 10 games. And Jeff Munkin is telling his team to hang on. They want to listen to the UTSA alma mater. And then, of course, Army will have theirs as well as is tradition with Army, Navy, and Air Force football games. Great respect shown by each program for each other.
as always, capped off by Beat Navy. Jeff Munkin thanks the UTSA socially distanced marching band for the alma mater. An impressive win for the Black Knights here today on the road. They moved to five and one on the season. And the freshman quarterback, Cade Ballard, the sophomore quarterback, Tyre Tyler, who had never played a snap each, performed so well in this game today en route to the victory. Since Sierra McCormick did have a pretty good outing for UTSA, nation's leading rusher in terms of total yards, entering play today, 18 carries, 133 yards, did not have a touchdown, but did average 7.4 yards a touch, Jay. Maybe we should have gone to him more. I think there was some instances where we felt that that could have been the case, but it didn't happen. You see those third down conversions for Army, uh, that, that, that really increases that seven-minute time of possession battle. UTSA was, I believe, five out of nine in the first half on third down, so that kind of decreased in the second half. The penalties back-breaking for UTSA. Uh, pretty even game in terms of total yards, but when you when you when somebody runs for 305 yards against you, I, I don't care who it is, you're going to lose. Coach Munkin, joined by Justin. Coach Munkin, how impressed were you with Cade Ballard and Tyer Tyler after having so much limited experience coming into this game? It's just, it's an improbable victory. Those guys, uh, Cade hasn't played football in more than a year. Uh, Tyer Tyler took his last snap as a football player in 2017. And I thought they just played their hearts out. And our, our whole offense just, they just covered those guys and kept blocking for them. And, and uh, they just did a tremendous job of taking care of the team and, and running the offense. Coach Davis had a great plan. I'm so proud of him and the plan he put together, our coaches and what they did to, to have this team ready. There seemed to be a jolt of energy on UTSA's side after that Frank Harris touchdown. How impressed were you that your team came back out and they had an immediate response to close out the game? You know, that, that's, uh, that's just it. You can respond or react. And react is usually you put your head down and it's negative and our guys just they just knuckled up and and uh, and went out there and responded. It was a great throw by by Cade and, and uh, Cam made a nice run after he caught it. It was a big play to set up that last touchdown. Congrats on a win. Enjoy this one. Thanks. Coach. Uh, you bet I will for sure. <laughs> Back Come to here, you guys. Man. I'm so proud of you, buddy. <laughs> Justin, thanks so much. Big celebration for the freshman quarterback. Gabe Ballard here today in San Antonio. Now for Corey Chavis, Justin Walters, and the entire CBS Sports Network crew. It's Dave Ryan saying so long. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now we're sending back to Brent and the gang with Inside College Football. Story from here, young and experienced quarterbacks get it done, and Army wins his fifth game of the year.